Hello everybody, this is Android Gamer. I'm back with another top 10 games. Uh, this time I'm moving a little bit more forward in time and going with the Amiga. Uh, so that was the second gaming uh, console that my family had and really enjoyed playing a lot of the games on it. So before I go with the top 10, I do want to do three shout outs uh, to recent subscribers to my channel, at least ones I can see the names listed. Uh, so first one is Philip, Philip uh, Potters. I know I messed it up, I was going to try to pronounce it, but uh, my apologies about that, Philip. Uh, the other ones is Useless Toilet and Brunch Club. So thank you for subscribing to my channel and joining the Droid Army. Okay, so moving on. Number 10. <clears throat> so number 10 is Battletech. Now, it was a very enjoyable RPG style futuristic game. Uh, I think there's a comic book or an anime based on it as well, uh, where you're in the future and you're driving around in giant robots and they play the character of Jason. Uh, it was very good. Gameplay was good. Uh, also, a little bit repetitive with the story, but still, it was an enjoyable little game. So moving on to number nine. And number nine was Megalomania, and I, I enjoy playing this a lot. Um, where it is is that you, it's an RPG or st uh, strategy, real-time strategy game where you're fighting different heroes and you have alliances and all that, and as you go through, you can go through different ages. Uh, there is an end game to it, but I never ab was able to get to it because for some reason, I'm not sure if it was a glitch in the game or what, but within like the last uh, eon that they had, that it just poured it, all my available men into that one lo location, so I never really got to the end. Um, but anyway, it was good. The gameplay was fast paced and intense when it needed to be. Uh, you had the ability of pacing it or speeding up everything that's going on. Um, yeah, you go through all the different ages and stone and science and all that. It was really enjoyable. Number eight. Number eight is Chaos Engine. Uh, I enjoyed playing this with my brother. We always played two player with it. It is sort of arcade style game where you are running around fighting. You have a bunch of different heroes to choose from. One guy that I used a lot, which was Navy, and he had a cannon to replace one of his arms, and each one had different abilities, and as you go through, you upgrade your abilities and so on. And yeah, me and my brother really enjoyed playing it together and playing it through. So, yeah. Number seven. Number seven was Amberster, another uh, RPG style game that we enjoyed playing and within it you are trying to find all the pieces to the Amberster and going through and fighting and traveling around. It was a top down sort of game and as you went through you collected or found different people to recruit into your team in your party. And the music was good, the graphics was, I mean, for the age was good, I mean, obviously, technology and graphics has come a long way since then, but I mean, it was still in the, the 80s when it, these games came out, so it was still really good. Number six. Number six I put in was Wings. Uh, it was another game that me and my brother and my dad enjoy playing where you are a World War One flying ace and you travel and you go through World War One. you had a, a journal that you'd play through and there's different type of matches, different type of, <clears throat> sorry, different type of missions that you did. One was where you're flying, one when you were striking down infantry, and one where you're bombing. And where you were flying, you were either shooting down planes or um, balloons and try not to get shot down by any aircraft guns. And within the journal it gives you real-time information so where you're flying against uh, Luftwaffe and they had 
uh, mentions about the Red Baron and Billy Bishop and all the heroes from World War One when they were flying. It was a good game. It allowed you to go through all the way to Lieutenant Colonel that you played through. And we enjoyed it as guys of my family, and it was a fun little game. <clears throat> Number five. Come on. Number five is Pirates. Now, I've played both the original, which is this, and the remake that they came out with, that Atari came out with. And I enjoyed both of them, um, but I didn't really include this into the PC one, which I'll explain in that episode, which is coming out next. Um, but <clears throat> they're both different in regards to this one was more difficult to play through, where the other one, you advance more and there was more of a story to it, where it explained about what happened to each of your family members, how they got a bit lost and all that stuff. And as you go through, you're fighting, collect, er, uh, increasing your fleet and increasing your ranking and the one of four um, crowns you can go under, which was a British, French, Dutch or Spanish, and you go into villages and attack villages and all that stuff, and it was really enjoyable. As I said, this one had a little bit more of a learning curve and a little bit more difficulty to it, which still made it a little bit more interesting to play through. So yeah, it was very enjoyable. <laughs> Number four. Number four was uh, Kingdoms of England, another game that we enjoyed as a family. All of us, all, me and my sister enjoyed it too, and with it, it was a turn-based <clears throat> game where, as you can see in the right there, uh, it has the map of the uh, United Kingdom, including Scotland and Wales and all that stuff, and as you go through, you try to claim uh, territories and claim territories from your enemies. Uh, they also have, halfway through... Or every once in a while they have an archery contest where you play against. So you collect, you train knights and foot soldiers and archers and all that stuff. And it's really enjoyable. And the, the, the music for it was amazing. I always remember, I'm still remembering the music. I want to try to find somewhere and use that music for something. Because it's really good guitar playthrough of it. Number... Three. Number three is Monkey Island. So this is the first of the few games that LucasArts created using the Grog engine that they called it, which was one of the out there towards the alcohol choice in Monkey Island. Um, this is one of two games I've included in this list for uh, LucasArts. Um, and McGowan, of course, it continued on with its series and had four different uh, <clears throat> series following the titular Guy Bush Sleepboard. There's a screenshot of the gameplay of one of the scenes in town. And you don't really realize how f hilarious the game is until you actually start listening to, uh, to its voice by voice characters. And it's even more interesting. I mean... <laughs> The, the humor in it and comedy in it was very good and they off the cuff, but even then when when they start adding voice character, or voice actors to it, it's brought it to a whole different level. And it's an enjoyable story of Guy Brush Sleepwood, how he's a nobody pirate, or at least a nobody at the point at first, but he wants to be a pirate and he goes through and meets up with the governor's daughter and they fall in love and all this stuff and... And there's a little truck, which is their titular enemy or villain that you have throughout the entire the saga. So it's a really good game. I really enjoyed it. Moving on to number two. <clears throat> number two is uh, the Fairy Tale Adventure, which is an enjoyable game, one that I actually completely played through and completed, which is very <laughs> powerful thing because you can't really stop playing the game at all. There's no saves. There was no some games didn't have a save way back then, so you had to play through from beginning to the end. And it's an RBG where you had 
three brothers from her town. Uh, you had Julian, which was Julian the Brave, and he was strong and all that. There was Philip, the Smart, and uh, Kevin the Kind. And so you play through and you fight enemies, and the whole point is to get to the defeat the wizard and save the princess, and the whole adventure is going through and collecting all the things. So you have magic, you have swords, you have bows. You come along to a turtle and to a um, a swan where you fly around. So it's, it was a very enjoyable game. I say it was very difficult because there was no real stopping. There's no there was no real save point at all where you could just stop and pause the game. You had to play through as much as you can, and hopefully no one else wanted to play it on the computer at that time. It was good graphics for the time, good uh, solid soundtrack and all that. And there was, you, <clears throat> there was points where it was paused, but there was points where the music would just suddenly change from one, from regular travel music to battle music was good. Now we get to a couple honorable mentions in this episode. So the first honorable mention is Bubble Bobble. I enjoyed it. I never beat it, but it was still an enjoyable game. And it was fun playing with uh, two players or playing with one player. I've also played the sequel to this. was Bubble Bobble 2 Rainbow Islands, which is completely different. They completely revamped it because they get rid, of, get rid of Bubble and Bobble all together and had somebody that looked Similar to Mario, but he didn't have a hat, so I don't know. So, next honorable mention is Defenders of the Crown. Now, the original Defenders of the Crown was difficult. Not that came out of a remake, which I never played at all before, but the original demo Defenders of the Crown, I could never really defeat or beat. Um, but it's sort of the same thing with uh, Kings of England, where it's a turn-based game. And it had different uh, gameplay or different mini games where you where you were going to attack a castle. If they had walls around the castle, you'd do a, ca a catapult mini game where you played the uh, catapult and shot rocks at the wall to try to break it down. And my number one choice for mini or yeah, mini games for uh, Amiga games is. Loom. Now, this is, as I said, this is the second game that I'm featuring that was from LucasArts and on, on the Grog engine. I extremely enjoyed this game. It had amazing graphics, it had interesting gameplay, it had an amazing story, uh, and there's all those ups and downs, there's violence, there was thrills. Uh, they Left at a, at a cliffhanger, and there was talks about a sequel, but the sequel never came. I'm really sad about that, but the graphics on this was amazing. The sound quality was key and perfect, what you wanted to have in the game. So that's why it's in the top pick for my for my list. Um, if you agree with this, certainly it's a certain like on this channel. If there's any that you thought that should have been in, or those ones that you thought was your favorites, please certainly put them in the comments. I would like to help and see that. Um, but either way, this is Android Gamer, Layer Days, and happy gaming!